This is Your Voice is a Choice. I kind of mentioned a little bit about this, and you may have been experienced some of it. So this is going to be really fun. I'm going to play a sound of someone singing, a little snippet, and then they're going to speak. So when, as they're singing, I want you to picture what you think they look like, you know, make a little stereotype in your head. <laughs> and then you'll hear them talk, and then I'll show you the picture. Okay? To take an eye of the dark Man made the bowl for the water light Like no one made the all I love it how you guys just stand up and just chat, it's great And this is what she looks like Did that surprise anyone? <laughs> Yes. Uh, okay. Here's another one. Sun in the sky. You know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by. You know how I feel. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait. Oh, camera two? Okay. All right. I'm right here. All right. Thank you. <laughs> 16 year old, I think. 16 that time. Very different speaking voice than her singing voice. Okay. And this one. That on the cross, my burden gladly buried. He bled and died to take away my sins. I sang in Glee Club in high school and things like that, but I never sang solo. Jim Neighbors. <laughs> All right, so I am going to play now. This is a male. He's going to sing a snippet of a song, and he's going. The only thing he's going to change is the vibrato, the amount of vibrato, and the position of his larynx. So the key of the song isn't going to change. Nothing else is going to change about the song. That makes sense. Because let's all do this so you can find it. Put your hand on your larynx. Now swallow. You feel it go up. Okay, now yawn. You feel it go down? Yeah. Okay, so your larynx can move, and you have that choice to move it. It is not a pitch changer. It is a timbre changer. It'll change the quality of the sound. Just like with any instrument, the bigger the body is, the darker the sound, and the smaller the body is, the brighter the sound. If you think of a violin compared to a, a cello, it still has strings, but, you know, it's just a different shape. So when we lower our larynx, the sound gets darker. What I'll be explaining to you is that you've got a whole mixing board. There's a bunch of different ways to get a darker and brighter sound, but this is one of them. Lowering of the larynx makes the sound darker. It also makes the sound sound more classical. And the more you go up, the more it starts to sound way more toward punk, I would say the opposite end. <laughs> also, there's more vibrato in the more classical sound and less as you get more contemporary going up. So this is cool. Same guy, same song. If I loved you, time and again I would long to say I loved you time and again I would long to say if I loved you time and again I would long to say if I loved 
loved you time and again I would long to say if I loved you time and again I would long to say round of applause no. so you've probably heard soprano alto baritone whatever you probably have you heard these kind of terms before Basically what it is, it's, it's, it's classical typecasting. That's bad, you know, what it is, basically. So it's called vocal fock, and it applies to classical music. It doesn't apply to contemporary music, because in contemporary music, you can sing anything, any style, anything you want, <laughs> any range, whatever. Because in classical music, you have to be able to position your voice in a way that it cuts across the orchestra, and you have to project. So you have to sing songs within your natural voice type that because it has to it has to move across the room. But in contemporary music, you have a microphone. So you only need to sing this far away. I need to sing as loud as I talk. I never have to really pr project. You don't ever have to project. And that's why there's so much texture in contemporary music because you hear people going, you couldn't ever project to do that those sounds that you hear that you hear the people do it's all my it's great and basically it has to do with with the range which is how many notes one can hit the weight and brightness or darkness of your tone the size that you know how much drama you can produce where your range is that you're comfortable singing in the color, the quality, the texture of your voice, you know, transition points where you shift in your register, how extended your registers are, what your speaking range is like, your physical characteristics, like how, how you're built, how you're small, thin, large, whatever, tall, your age and experience. So if you're singing opera, they will typecast you because if you're a thin, high-pitched soprano, they're going to put you in, you know, Christine, right? She's going to get that role of the young, pretty, you know, innocent, whatever. And then if you're like heavy and, you know, you've got a darker sound, you're going to, maybe you're going to play the villain, you know, they're going to stick you where you go in the typecasting. The reason why that changed, which is interesting, is because musical theater came along and the people wanted to work. So they just went, Oh, you need a soprano? Okay. Oh, okay, you need an alto? Oh. <laughs> Just give me the job. I'll do whatever you want. And then things changed. Just to know that it's possible because I showed you examples of people who don't sound like they talk and someone who actually just did it, right, four in a row, totally different sound of the voice, same person. And it wasn't changing the key, you know, it wasn't like he was singing higher, or singing lower, or same, say everything was the same. So yes, you will learn how to do that. And I'll do some things that just little things I'll have you do that seems like crazy weirdness, that why are you making me do this? And it'll make sense, you know, just play along, humor me, the crazy woman. <laughs> it'll be fun. Very much fun.